Hi everyone, trust you all are doing well. So what we're going to be working on now is basically our CRUD part of our API. So in this case, we have our index right here, and then we have our store, show, update, and destroy. So we're going to be working on these right now. In order to test them all, we're going to use Postman to do that. So let's get started. All right, so this is basically the Postman working environment that we're going to be working in. Now, what you can do if you have already Postman open, and if you just want to change the theme, so in this case, it's the light theme, so it's what you're probably going to have. So after you installed it, so we got the Postman light theme, but I like the dark theme, so if you can just go to themes, and you can just choose your theme right there, so totally up to you. The next thing that you want to do is you want to create basically a workspace. All right, so if you go to workspaces, and then you can click create workspace right there you can obviously give a name and then you give a summary about the workspace and then you can say personal private team or public so obviously for the personal only you can access it that's the one that i've chosen and the private only invited team members can access it totally up to you team member, all team members can access it and public all right totally totally up to you so after you've created the workspace you click on that and then you will go to basically on the collections right here. So as you can see, my workspace is Academy open right there. Under collections, you're gonna create a new collection. You can create a new collection right here, or you can use the plus icon right there. Totally up to you. Now in this case, we're just gonna create a new collection. Now the collection name, I'm gonna just do it as Badger API like that. All right. Now what's nice about this is we can set the authentication on the collection itself and everything inside this collection will basically use that authentication all right now the next thing that i want to do is i want to add a request all right so we're going to add the first one now the first one is basically get all articles request okay so let's do that so let's get all the articles articles all right so that's basically get all articles all right now I don't want to have to type this in, like forward slash in the URL, badger test, forward slash API, forward slash v1, forward slash articles. I don't want to have to type this for every URL that I'm going to do. So what I want to do is I want to copy basically that whole URL place is. Then on my collection itself, on that main one, what I want to do, I want to set a variable. Okay, so the variable name we can just say as app URL, all right? The current value, we just want to set that to that, or you can just set it to the base like this, all right? And then the other one we can set it as full URL, and we can set it to this. Now, instead of use, having to type all of this out, we can set the variables as is. So then you just click Save. So on the collection itself, on the variables, now we just press Save. So now we've got our variables right there. Okay, so let me just close that. Now in here, instead of having to type all of this out, what we can do is we can just say full URL, all right, forward slash articles like this all right now the next thing that i want to do is under the headers right here i want to make sure that whatever response i get from the request itself i want it to be in json format so what we do is we just say accept and then we just want to set application json all right so that's basically how we want to receive the data so then i press save now we get all the articles so if i press send as you can see, it gets a message returned, I'm authenticated, all right? So we're not auth. So what I want to do is I want to disable the middleware for now. We're gonna get in a couple of episodes. I just wanna deal with Sanctum on its own. So let's do that. All right, so as you can see, the middleware auth Sanctum right here. So we can just comment that out because I want to explain this in its own episode. There's a couple of nuggets of knowledge I want to share with you. Otherwise, the video will be a bit too long so let's close that off just uncomment it and just save it as such all right so let's go back to postman all right so as you can see if we press send you will see we receive all the articles right here okay so we got articles there the first one as you can see we got the attributes 
the title and we have the slot in the created ad date and you can see it will bring us the relationships with the type of people and John Doe and there's the authors right there right so that's the first one the next one is we want to also get a single article so let's do the next one right so I want to click on it again so I'm going to add another request and this is just going to be get a single article Okay, so I can obviously do it like this, show, so that you kind of know which method you're dealing with. So then we're just going to say now, we're going to get uh, the full URL. So let's do that. So full URL, then forward slash articles. Let's go for the first one. All right, just like that. Now in the headers, what I want to do is I want to accept them as JSON format. So let's do that. And I like just press send. So as you can see, nothing returns yet because we haven't get to that part yet. So let's click save. And I just want to edit this one. Edit it and I just want to make this an uh, index. Index method. Okay, just do that. Okay, so as you can see, we have it right there. Now let's work on this get a single article because right now it just returns a 200 response to say that it's okay. So it, nothing failed but it just sends a one, all right? But what I want to do is I want to actually view the article number one. Now, basically in our show method, because that's the one that we're dealing with, what we want to do is we want to return, okay, a new, uh, the article resource that we created, so article resource, okay, and then we pass in the article like this, and what I want to do is I want to send back a response. Okay. Now the response, and I just want to set the status code as well. So set the status code. Now the code that I want to send back is I want to say 200. 200 means everything went well, everything is okay. So basically that's what we want to do in our show method right here. So let's quickly see if we receive the article. It just make sure we bring in this article resource as you can see it's imported right there awesome all right so in postman right here so let's click send let's see if we get the article so as you can see we receive the article right here so as you can see the wrap is articles and the type is articles right here so let's quickly go to the article resource because i just wanted to show you this part right here all right, so in the article resource, you see this wrap right here that we that we created. So if I uncomment this, so I'm not doing anything right there, let's go back to post. So if I send, send it right there, you can see it wraps it in data. Now, you can leave it as such, but if you don't want this to be data, you want it to be articles, you can do that with that wrap. So let's do it. Right, so I'm just going to put the wrap back on, and then you will see it will display it with the article. So if you can see, it changes to the article. So if we go back to number two, let's press send. As you can see, it bring article with the ID of number two. And let's go to something we don't have. Let's say on number 14, because we only have 10. So as you can see, it says no query result for the model article, not found exception. Now this is not a good response, in my personal opinion, to whoever is going to deal with this error all right now what i want to do is i want to create an exception okay so let's quickly do that so if an article is basically not available we want to send the right exception to the user all right so let's go there under http under app let me just close everything off so it's easy to see so under there you go to app exceptions in the handler right here so underneath the register the register right here what you want to do i'm just going to delete this all right delete everything in there so what i want to do now is we just do this all right so what do we want to say we want to say this renderable uh, renderable all right we just want to create a function all right and then we just going to say listen if you found the not found exception so if you if you get that all right just we're around a method we just set it to a variable and we're just going to pass in the request request like this all right so if you have the not found exception 
okay i want a custom message for that all right so if okay so if the request if the request is coming from all right now in this case we want to if it's coming basically on any of our api routes so if we go to any of our api routes like this so if any of this this not found exception is on the api route okay so if the request is coming from that what i want to do is i want to return a response okay so let's just do a return a response and the response i want to return is in json format okay and this is basically our response it must give it an error okay so the error must be like this just put a comma right there now the error is going to have a message now the message will be resource not found okay resource not found right so if you obviously if you have documentation and to kind of help the person out very nicely you can do that and obviously add a link to that okay and then you can have a type and this is we're going to just say what type of error this is and we're just going to say a not found http exception all right so you guys can get creative but not too creative remember there's other people that's going to see this message and you kind of want to make it as clear as possible all right now in this case you can say code all right let's say the code let's say you have a documentation of custom codes for not found exceptions you can add them in here in this case let's say the code is four four or five or whatever they can go to the documentation and look for that code right there and you can leave a link to for that error code right here okay that's totally up to you but i'm just leaving this an example i'm just saying example uh, link uh, just make it a dot com and i just say link just as an example okay and then you can say status code because remember you what you want to do is if anyone sees this they can be able to easily debug their code or and see what is wrong because remember you want to make it for the people that's consuming your api as easy as possible all right so i'm just going to return a string and this is we're just going to say that take that take the event that right there and we're just going to basically say get status code like this okay so obviously this will be a 404 all right let's quickly see if we return this basically this error message all right so basically this is how the message currently looks like okay so some people might not even know where to start with how to diagnose it or they might just look at it and say okay now i know what to do all right but what i want to do is i want to let them see the new one okay so let's do all right so let me just go over that again so if i press send so this is basically how the error message is going to look like and if we change it to the new one all right so this is basically how the new error message will look like and that's it so a much better, much better experience actually for the developer or the consumer of your API, in quotes. All right. So thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up and we'll continue with the crowd in the next couple of episodes. All right. So thank you and see you in the next one. Adios.